Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's on um, Sunday afternoon at about quarter to six and this is very strange for me to be doing this because I actually made this video yesterday and it was daytime and it was, you know, it was yesterday, it was a whole day ago. But after I'd been talking for a while, I noticed that the camera was off. And every time I turned it on, it just went off again, and I, so I couldn't use it anymore. And it didn't tell me that the batteries were running low. You know, you usually get a little sign, and it didn't have that little sign. So I thought, oh no, don't tell me, because last time I tried to use it, it had some other silly sign that it was telling me. Um, so anyway, I charged up the batteries, and it seems to be working, so... I have no idea why it didn't tell me the batteries were running out. I don't know. They just seem to be, have died suddenly or something. Anyway, so I'm back now. So this is going to be very odd to do it twice because, I, you know, that doesn't happen to me very often and doesn't usually happen at all. I don't, oh, I don't think I've ever done it. Maybe I have. But I do hear it happen to other people. And it's confusing because you're not sure what you've said, but luckily because I'm starting all over again doesn't really matter, does it? So let me just tell you some exciting news. It's been raining. It rained a little bit yesterday. And it's rained like there was some proper rain for a few minutes today. Like proper rain. Not just what I call baby rain. Or sprinkly rain. Just like rain. It was. It's lovely. The ground is a bit wet. And I don't think it's helped the fires. The smoke is really thick outside. It's really thick. It smells a lot and it's the sky like it's just hazy, you can't see into the distance, you can't see buildings in the, di you know, so a block and a half away and stuff like that. So I guess the fires are still pretty bad, but um, it was so pleasant to see rain for a change. Even if it doesn't rain for long, like just five minutes, it's still better than zero. It's just fun. Anyway, let me catch you up quickly and then I'll tell you about what Lottie's wearing. So I had my grandchildren for those two days, which was heavenly. I miss them so much now that they've gone. It's just lovely when they're around. Um, and that was really fun. We had a great time. And then, um, so that was, when did they go? They stayed, that's right, they stayed Thursday and Friday. And yesterday I tried to make the video and I did some painting on my granddaughter's doll, which I'll tell you about in a minute. And then today, um, my daughter rang in the morning and... And we went off, her family, so her two little girls and her husband and me, went off and we had a big adventure. We found a cafe which had a park nearby in a suburb called Alexandria. So it's not near me, it's a bit close to where they live. And, um, and the plan was that while, we, while we're waiting for the food to come, that um, the daddy would take the two little girls over to the park for play. Well... You wouldn't believe what happened, like you would now that I've started this video, but it started to rain. Like we put our order in and we're sitting there pleasantly and then all of a sudden there was proper, proper rain falling so the girls couldn't go for a play but um, it was still fun to know that it was raining. We had a lovely time and then I got home this afternoon and, um, and here we are. <coughs> so I'm just, excuse me, here we go. <coughs> I don't think I can do a video without my throat being ridiculous, so I'm sorry about that. I guess you're used to it now. So let me tell you what Lottie's wearing. Um, this romper is just adorable. I love it. It's um, a navy blue, and it's in the style that I don't usually buy, with the straps that cross over at the back and come over the shoulders. Um, you know, I really prefer when the front is kind of full and the back is full, and they come up and meet at the shoulders, if you know what I mean. But this one I saw about a year ago, I think, and just couldn't resist it because it's pink and navy, which are my favourite, which is my favourite colour combination. Plus, it's just beautiful. So let me describe it to you. And it's by a company called Seed, which is here in Australia. And it was on a bit of a sale. Um, they don't have giant sales, so it's not a brilliant bargain, but it was like... <coughs> excuse me, 20% or 25% off, something like that, you know, just enough to make me think, oh yes, I have to have it kind of thing. Anyway, it's in a, a navy and it's like, you, I, when I touch it, I can feel 
that it's a bit like corduroy so I can feel the very fine like pinwheel cord but it looks like velvet it's just very fine it's beautiful and it's just a beautiful dark navy and on the front is a great big pink apple and there are two green leaves at the top of the apple and a bit of a stalk so that's it it's just simple and it's plain it doesn't have any ruffles on it or anything it's just a plain bag and it's crossed at the back and the buttons are actually at the back of it instead of you know at the front anyway underneath I've put um, a bodysuit now let me just see if I can remember what brand that is because I did have a look yesterday so I could tell you um, oh that's it Isabella it's by Isabella I don't know anything about that brand I must have found it somewhere um, on some website or something but it's it's plain white and it's got puff sleeves and they are gathered into a double ruffle which has got a navy blue like little pico trim around the edge and there's a big ruffle collar which is a double ruffle as well in white with a navy blue trim and then hmm, look at the socks I found socks to match there are what is that brand I'm sure you guys know it oh yeah yep yeah, yep yeah, yep yeah. pretty originals which is quite a frilly kind of sort of brand I don't buy much of their stuff because it's a bit over the top for me but these socks are perfect they're just little plain white um, ankle socks but around the ankle you know around the fold over part of the socks is some white nylon sort of lace and then there's also a navy blue very fine ribbon that's been sewn onto that so it just matches the outfit perfectly perfectly for Lottie and so I put a pink headband on her head just to tie all the pink in and well not all the pink though there's only one other bit of pink which is the big apple and then she's also holding her Miola teddy elephant on a stick that's her, her special um, reborn toy that she's got so that is my Lottie and she's lying on her um, bedding from the silver cross dolls pram which is white just with some eyelet you guys call it eyelet lace we call it brodery on glaze um, and some nice satin ribbon threaded through a bit of lace so that's what she's lying on and she's in her changing basket which I bought I don't know a year ago I think I, I did talk about it at the time it's a lovely woven basket and it's meant as a changing basket so rather than you know having a changing pad on a flat surface you, you change your baby in this basket it's shallow it's, it looks like a Moses basket but much more shallow so that's that's my Lottie for the day and now let me think for a minute what else did I want to tell you oh two exciting things I'm up to the hair of my granddaughter's doll uh, up to doing the hair that sounds funny the way I put it before yeah so I've done the painting is done and I've put varnish over the doll so she's got one coat so far um, and so I'm up to the hair I probably won't start it today it'll be a tomorrow job now um, and I'm planning on doing like combi hair for her because my granddaughter is just little she's only seven and you know I think it rather than giving the doll a full head of hair I'll do I'll paint it underneath and then just give it some mohair on top that way it wouldn't matter if all the mohair gets yanked out or whatever happens to it you know it might get brushed to death or something I don't know I don't want her to have to be careful I just want her to enjoy her baby so that's how I'll do it and I'll give it's a closed eyed baby because that's what she wanted I'll do give it eyelashes as well of course and then whatever happens happens it doesn't matter just so long as she loves the doll that's all I care about so that's a job for tomorrow um, but that's exciting so I've been plodding away at that when I have time which has been great and um, um, oh my yeah more news about my the doll that I'm getting made I um, I had an email from the girl who's doing the painting on it and um, I think that was a, probably about a week ago and she said that she was going away for a short holiday and then she would start my doll when she got back and I'm so excited because I didn't all she told me was 2020 and then she hadn't been in touch so I didn't know if there was like um, you know if, I, I mean I maybe I had to wait for the whole of 2020 maybe there were 15 other people ahead of me or however many dolls she makes a year so I don't know but anyway it looks like I'm 
first cab off the rank. So how cool is that? I have no idea how long it's going to take her to do. I don't know. I just, I don't want to sort of, I sort of don't want to know if you know what I mean. It's such an exciting surprise. Um, and I had to, you know, tell her eye colour and what sort of wig and stuff like that I wanted. Um, so I did that and I was actually going to be a bit more specific but then, you know, the reason I don't take custom orders myself is because, you know, I, I'm happy to add any features but I need people to really like my style of painting and then, you know, I can add things that, that they would like. But to be specific, you know, if someone says to me they like heavy modelling, that might not be what I consider heavy, heavy modelling and I would hate to deliver a doll that they, you know, that they don't like. I mean, because interpretation is, is huge, isn't it? We all see things differently. So, anyway, I was going to ask for the eyes to be slightly... Now, you'll think I'm a bit crazy, but just slightly crossed, just a bit turned in, because I love that look. It adds to that, uh, you know, that look that I love on babies, that kind of wondering, inquisitive sort of look, or innocent sort of... Anyway, I thought, no, I won't ask for that because her interpretation might be completely different and then it could end up, you know, I don't know, you know, exaggerated or something, so I didn't. Um, but anyway, of course I've been looking on eBay and Etsy for outfits for the doll. Of course I have. I may have picked up one or two to go with the shoes that I've bought. Um, but I'm trying to control myself because I don't have the doll. I haven't seen it. And the way she works, this artist works, is that you don't pay anything until she's finished the doll and then she show, shows you pictures of it. Um, and then if you want it, that's when you, you pay for it. Which is actually how I work. I don't ever ask, for pe ask people for money up front because, I mean, for a start, I don't do customs. But even so, if I did, I, I don't want to do that because I don't, you know... I don't think you should pay for something that you haven't got, like that isn't yours yet. I don't need you to pay me for my work because I can always sell a doll on. You know, I'm I'm not out of po pocket for the hours and the the um, materials I've used. I can always sell a doll. Um, so that's why I would never ask anybody to for a down payment or anything. I'm happy if if the customer would buy the kit and supply me the kit. That that's a good thing. That means I've got a bit of a stake in what I'm doing, but otherwise I don't. Anyway, she doesn't either, so that's quite good. And I've been saving my pennies, so um, I should be right by the time the doll's ready, whenever that is. And I promise you guys, you'll be here to see it. I'll, um, uh, it's a bit tricky, but I'll, I'll do the box opening on for you to see. That's how I'll do it. And then we get to have the excitement together, which is just fabulous. I'll probably be able to set the camera up over the table um, and sit there and have the camera over my shoulder. Maybe that will work and I can do it that way. Oh, so I'm getting really excited. I, I lie in bed and think about, you know, what sort of outfits I want for the doll and, you know, all that stuff. You know all the stuff we do as doll collectors. That's what we do, isn't it? It's just such a... Uh, just, oh, I, don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It's brilliant. Brilliant. Now there's one more thing I did want to talk about, just very briefly, because this is ending up being one of my exceedingly ridiculously long videos, and that is I would love you guys to go over and watch Kimberly's video. Um, she's from Kimberly's Cocoon is the name of her channel. If you go and watch her latest video, because she talks about something that um, I've been thinking about for ages, and I've talked to her about it as well, because we're both artists. And um, it's about the need for artists to actually see a blank kit before they want to pre-order it. Because, you know, mostly artists are the same as you guys. We just get to see those beautiful prototypes, um, you know, the different versions by the different prototype artists. And from that, we decide that we want to buy a kit. Well, you know, that, that's all well and good, but there is a lot of detail that you don't see in those, in those photos. And... I, as an artist, I have some things that are deal breakers for me, and I have bought many kits, and believe me, in Australia, the kits are far more expensive than what they are overseas, because our dollar is really bad, so kits for me cost around $200 each, and um, they're limited edition kits, which is what I tend to get. I have bought some open editions, of course, you know, um, but... 
but um, mostly kids are around 200 for me. It's a huge investment. And then to get that kit and see that it, there's something on it that if I would have known it was there, it would have been a deal breaker. And that's happened to me a fair bit. And they're not deal breakers for other people, I understand that. But as an artist, I just want to paint something that I feel really connected to. And so I'm sure you see that in my work. I'm, I'm absolutely sure you can tell when you have one of my dolls or you see one of my finished dolls. I need to, I need to feel that thing about the doll and, and have the excitement of painting it and not dreading one part of it or just you know having that put me off. So probably a lot of collectors have things that they don't like. I'm sure you guys do. But you get to see all of that in the clear photos of things that are on sale. We don't. We don't even get to see the blank kits in general. Sometimes you see, you know, the, the works in progress that the artists post. But, but not all the time. And there's probably only one or two artists that I would trust not to have things on their kits that, that would put me off. And then in general the other ones would probably have something and it doesn't mean it's a bad kit or a bad sculpt or anything. It's just something that I don't like as, as an artist. So um, I'm really I'm trying to to push hard for um, artists to to clearly show their blank kits um, before you know before you have to make a pre-order. So it could be at the same time as the prototype artists are putting up their pictures, but it just needs to be before the pre-orders are due because you can't risk. Uh, limited edition selling out and it being something you want just because you're waiting to see somebody do a kit review on the kit. You know, you, you have to buy it when it, you know in that those few days that it's available. You can't risk not buying it in case it's not right. So um, yeah, just I'd love you to have a look at Kimberly's video because she explains it a lot better than me. That's just my explanation from my little corner of the world which is really just my little workroom and all my kits and things. Um, I have lots of beautiful kits, beautiful, beautiful kits. And I, I fall in love with the face more than the rest of the kit, you know. Lots of times it doesn't matter to me about the rest, but occasionally it does. You know, something like three-quarter legs is not what I like I, because it's very difficult to dress a three-quarter leg doll. It's not impossible. Of course you can dress them in all sorts of things, but you have to be aware of what they're you know, their cloth body showing and things. So there are a few deal breakers for me. Anyway, I better end it there. I think that's everything I wanted to say. Um, but thank you so much for joining me on this lovely day. Oh, that's what I didn't say. The reason I was happy to put this romper on Lottie, it is a bit thicker and a bit heavier than her other summer rompers. But because it's been cool the last two days, in fact, my granddaughters were complaining it was cold today. Can you believe it? It's been sort of between, say, about 19 and 23. And I did look up yesterday what 23 was, and that's about 73 Fahrenheit. So you're probably all rolling around the floor laughing, thinking, what, you know, how could you possibly think that's cold? But my little granddaughters were saying, oh, it feels like winter. It's like winter today. Because it's, it's grey, and it was raining a bit, and it was, it was cool. But it's definitely not cold. It's just pleasant. It's just very, very pleasant. So I figured Lottie could wear something a bit heavier to show you. And actually, so far, this... No, I was going to say this might be my favourite romper so far, but no, because I love that last one. And the first one and the second one. Anyway, I think just a romper is just something I love full stop. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'm sorry it's been so long. But thank you so much, all my dear friends, for being here. I look forward to seeing your comments, which of course I haven't caught up on. I have read them, but not caught up with replies. <coughs> but I know you understand, and you're very forgiving towards me, so thank you very much for that. So, everybody, until we meet again with another romper, and remember to tell me if you get sick of seeing rompers, I'll just keep going unless I hear from you guys. And um, I'll talk to you very soon, so take care everyone. Be kind to each other. Bye-bye. <laughs>